of the spreadsheet. First, all data have been removed. Now, let's learn how to use this application. First, let's click on this icon to open the graphical user interface. This graphical user interface is used for parameter setting and running application. Now let's take a look at the input data. First, let's deal with the effort of data. Here we can select the type of FRF which have been measured. In this demo, the annotants are used as FRF. Note that the annotants can also be named accelerants. Now let's define the frequency range. Here we are going to enter the number of frequency points. Now we are going to copy our FRF data in the two first column of this sheet. The first column is the frequency in Hertz. The second column is the magnitude of the annotants in the appropriate unit. The FRF curve is plotted on the graphic. Depending on your own data, you can scale the graphic. Now let's select the number of modes in the dialog box. We're going to move the dialog box to get a better view. Now we're going to enter the initial mode of parameters. These parameters can be obtained using the mpsdf.xls. This application estimates the mode of parameter using the graphical peak peak method. We're going to copy our mode of parameters in these 15 lines. We're going to have to enter the original mass and the original stiffness as well. We're going to, to begin with only one mod, then we're going to, to increase the number of mods until 5. One mod has been selected. Now we run the application by clicking on the run button. On the graphic you can see a lot of the response that are written in the third column C. Now we're gonna to use the curve fitting option to fit residue. First, let's activate the curve fitting algorithm. Then let's enter the number of iteration. In our example, 20 iteration have been chosen. Then we will run again the application. After a few seconds, we can see the new response. Now we're gonna to increase the number of modes. Two modes. Three modes. Four modes. And fifth modes. The curve fitting is very good in the frequency range. Consider now we could use this model as a useful tool for proposing design modification and improving dynamic response on the tested part. 
we close the dialog box to end the application. This is the end of this tutorial. You can experiment with your own data.